Hey, what is up, everybody? Michael Crump back here again, talking about the latest and the greatest in PlayStation homebrew news and much, much more. So I put out this tweet just a little bit ago, and it says, look what we have here. Oh, our PlayStation 5 is running Redis version 6.04. And as you can see in here, there is some information that is returned that can be a bit interesting. Now, if you're wondering what Redis is, Redis is basically just an open source in-memory data store that's used by lots of different developers as a database, a cache, a streaming engine, and a message broker. Now, if we scroll down into this a little bit, you can see that it has things like in-memory data structures, so like strings and lists. Uh, programmability, so Lua, which I've discussed Lua in the past and how we can run that right now with BD-JB. And then there is obviously some other features in here like persistence and clustering. For PlayStation 5 users, there is some of this information that you can retrieve. And then there's a lot of other commands that I didn't run. But you can take a look at those and explore those for your own self. Now, before we get started, there will be a couple of things that you're going to need. One of them is going to be that you will need to have Redis installed. And don't worry, if you're using Windows and Windows Subsystem for Linux, I'm going to walk you through all of these steps, step by step, and make sure that at least we have a running Redis instance in Ubuntu on Windows 10 or Windows 11. The other thing that you will need is you'll need the actual redis.f file. Now I'll provide a link to this simply because I could not find a GitHub repo where Eero Alley had released this on. So anyway, all credits go to the author here for creating this L file. I basically just stored it on my own GitHub. That way I can find it later and don't have to worry about any of these other sites closing up. And then I would assume that you have Netcat GUI in order to send the payload to your PlayStation 5. Okay, so at this point, if you're using Windows, then you can just simply follow along with me and make sure that you do come in here and go ahead and download this L file now. Let's go ahead and let's switch over to our Windows terminal using Windows subsystem for Linux, and we're going to use our Ubuntu instance. Okay, here I am. I'm inside of my Windows terminal, and as you can see, I am running Ubuntu 22.04.1. For the commands that I'm going to be running, it's simply these commands that's right in here on installing Redis. So you're going to want to copy each one of these commands in your terminal. So let's go ahead and let's do that on my machine. Okay, there's the first curl command, and we'll press enter. We do need to provide a super user password. Okay, great. Now we need to add that GPG key to our package manager that's built into Ubuntu. So let's do that now. And there we go. It's now been added to our packages. We'll now run a sudo apt get update and then we'll press return here. Okay. And after this finishes up, we will be ready to pull down Redis. So let's go ahead and let's do that. We'll clear out our screen here and we'll do a sudo apt dash get install Redis and then press return. All right, we are going to want to say yes to this screen. And if you see this failed message on the screen, that is okay. You can still proceed from there. So we'll go ahead and we'll clear out our terminal here one more time. And now let's go ahead and start the server. So again, that was just a sudo service redis dash server space start. And you can see that the redis server is now running. Now to begin with, we will want to type in redis dash CLI. And the reason we want to do that is we just want to make sure that everything was installed properly. 
And if you press return and you do see your computer's IP address followed by a port number, then you are in pretty good shape. Now, a super quick command that we can run here is just this ping command. So let's try that. And there we go. It says ping and then pong. So basically, we just had a successful ping to our own server. And that means we're pretty much up and running the way that we want to be. And now let's run a command. We're going to go info server here. And what we can see is, is that this one is running Redis version 7.05 which is the latest LTS release. We have a little bit about the operating system. So this is running in Ubuntu. So it thinks it's on Linux. It's also running uh, Microsoft X64 operating system. It has the architecture bits and then a bunch of other information in here. So one thing that I like to do before I switch over to my PlayStation 5 is I like to load up a tool such as Netcat GUI. And so here is that tool and you simply need to put in your IP address of your PlayStation 5 along with this port here, which is going to be 9020. And then as far as the file, it's going to be that redis.l file that I showed you where to download from my GitHub repo. So you're going to want this kind of available because in just a second, we're after we run the exploit on our PlayStation 5, we're going to press the inject payload over here. But now I'm going to go to activate WebKit here. And we're just going to go ahead and press OK and get our PlayStation 5 in an exploited state. OK, so now at this point, I'm going to go ahead and bring up Natcat GUI again, and I'm going to simply inject that payload for Redis.elf. OK, and as you can see here, it does say that the PS5 is listening on port 10.0.0.141 in my instance, but more specifically, it is on port 1004. So you will need to have that information for the next step. Okay, so back over on the computer here, what we're gonna to need to type into our terminal prompt here is going to be redis-cli and then space dash h, for the host, and then we need our PlayStation 5's IP address. Again, mine is 10.0.0.141. And then finally, we need to put in the port, which is just a dash P. And then that port number is going to be 1004. Again, this was shown just a second ago on the notification that popped up on our PlayStation 5. And now at this point, we can press the return key here. And then over on the PlayStation 5, it does show a confirmation that there was a packet sent and received there. And from here, we can go ahead and we can run those commands that Redis currently has. So we'll begin by running that info server, which is the command that you all saw in the tweet just a little bit ago. And as we can see right here, we've got a server, we've got a startup time, we have things in here such as the Redis version that's currently being ran, the operating system, the architecture, and then a few other things, including how long it has been up, which is actually true, so two days. And then we can also run Lua scripts. So let's go ahead and let's run a sample of that. So it's gonna be eval, and then this return, Michael Crump. Then when you press zero, obviously there is the output from that. So let's go ahead now and let's switch back over to the actual Redis docs in order to learn a little bit more about these couple of commands that we just ran, as well as explore that there's a huge library of commands that you can try out on your own. Now, as you can see in here, there is a ton of other parameters that we can pass in. So we could come back over and we could pass in the client that's connected to it, as well as we could just run the full info command right here in order to get absolutely everything back. And so from right here, I could just go info 
and then press return. And so here on my PlayStation 5, I can see that same sort of thing. So clusters, there's modules in here, CPU, I can scroll up to stats. I can see total connections received, 166. I can scroll up here and I can learn a little bit more about persistence. Over here gives me some information about the memory that's currently being used. Also, it has some information here such as clients, which clients are currently connected. And this one shows there's 14 right now. And then here was the server information that we looked at just a little bit ago. And if you want to play with some actual samples, well, obviously, John Tornblum had uploaded these a couple of months ago. And inside of this scripts folder right here, you can see here is a couple of different Lua samples. Now I covered these samples before in a previous video, but there's kind of like a hello world sample, which again was that same exact thing that we just looked at. There's also this Java version Lua sample where it can do things like return back what's the currently running Java version on your PlayStation 5. These are very cool things indeed that I think will definitely continue to help grow the scene. So anyway, I wanted to thank you so very much for watching this video. I hope it helped. Feel free to give me a like and subscribe to the channel. I would absolutely love to have you around for many, many years to come. All right, I'll talk to you on the next one. Michael.